was sitting on his pappy's knees. He saw that hammer laying down on the ground. Hammer be the death of me. Oh, that hammer be the death of me. Hi, everybody. I'm David Donar. I'm a folk uh, artist, uh, a storyteller, an animator, a cartoonist. And I'd like to share with you today uh, folk tales and folk tunes and some of the differences and the origins of it. I want to thank the uh, Markham Arts Council. Thank you for having me here and to share some of this wonderful music with you. And so hopefully you guys will get a deeper understanding. Uh, that intro was John Henry. You might know it. It's a kind of a popular folk tune. And uh, we'll get into some of the origins of what it's all about. So with that in mind, just to share a little bit of vocabulary, uh, folk tunes are simply kind of based on folk tales. And folk tales are basically um, ideas or stories that are handed down verbally through tradition, through cultural ideas. So it can be national, it can be global, it can be ethnic. Um, uh, there's also legends. A legend is something that is written down, like a legend of um, Paul Bunyan or the legend of John Henry. Uh, a myth is kind of the same thing like a legend. A myth is a story told as if it was true, but it becomes grand. It becomes supernatural. People tend to exaggerate. And that's the beauty of these music uh, ensembles. They're, they're traditional music, but then they change. They evolve. And so people change the meaning or the characters behind it. Uh, so folk uh, tales to me are great because they have rascals, uh, villains, heroes, uh, stories about the railroads, um, which I love about my singing and my, my storytelling. I like um, those type of stories, especially if they have a rascal and a hero on a railroad. That's, that's one of my favorites. Uh, so let's get started in John Henry. John Henry is based kind of on a true story of a, a, a railroad worker who would speak drive spikes into the mountain and they would blow up the, the mountain to create the tunnels. And so there was a man documented based in um, West Virginia who possibly was a prison labor uh, worker, African-American worker. So it's got some interesting political, social applications to it and the ethics of using prison labor. So John Henry, again, it's about a man who comes from the prison labor and ultimately sacrifices himself for the best of uh, humankind. It's kind of a supernatural, superhero thing. John Henry was a baby He was sitting on his pappy's knees He saw that hammer laying down on the ground Oh, that hammer be the death of me Oh, that hammer be the death of me John Henry said the captain Oh, man ain't nothing but a man You can take that hammer, you can me I'll die with that hammer in my hand. I'll die with that hammer in my hand. The captain said to John Henry, Oh, I'll bring my hammer down. I'll bring my steam hammer. I will pound that steam. I'll pound that steam out of the ground. I'll pound that steam out of the ground. John Henry had a baby, went by the name of Polly Ann. When he came down with that fever, oh no, she swung that hammer like a man. Oh, she swung that hammer like a man. When they buried John Henry, they buried him in the sand. 
in that locomotive arm holding down. There lies a steel driving man. There lies a steel driving man. Anyway, so that's John Henry with the banjo. This is kind of a traditional old time banjo, and uh, if you hear. It's called claw hammer, and it's kind of an old traditional stroke, and it does originates from the early African Americans who came to the New World and played the banjo on a gourd. But it's a kind of a similar technique. And it's kind of got a rolling. It's got a good beat to it. It feels like a train rolling and or a hammer striking, and so I think it was adequate for that type of song. So, John Henry was a popular tune. A lot of people adapted and changed it to their um, preferences and to their interpretation. And so I'd like to share with you another version. It's actually a new song, or a, a completely different song, but it's totally based on John Henry. And it's done by the great Mississippi John Hurt. He was a great uh, old-time blues, country blues player. And he um, took a lot of these songs and adapted and made it his own. And uh, so this one's called Spike Driver Blues. And it would be if some of his fellow rail workers saw what happened and decided, I'm not taking this anymore, I'm going to leave. And that's unfortunate. A lot of these, these workers that work these rails that spiked um, nails into the hard rock, uh, the dust, the silicon dust would get in their lungs and a lot of them would die. Maybe not right away, but eventually. Or the exhaustion or the uh, dynamite. It was perilous. It was really dangerous. So the mortality rate was pretty bad for um, immigrants and uh, people that were disadvantaged. And a lot of the African-American men ended up in these situations. But the songs are reflected of it. And uh, this one, I really think it, it's a great interpretation of John Henry. So we'll do Spike Driver Blues. John Henry was a steel driving man. Yeah, he went down. Oh Lord, he went down. Oh Lord, he went down. You can take my hammer, tell him I'm gone. Tell him I'm gone. Won't you tell him I'm gone? Won't you tell him I'm gone? This hammer was laying on the road, on the side of that road, on the side of the road, on the side of the road. That hammer was all covered in red, covered in red, all covered in red, all covered in red. That hammer, you can throw it into that river. You can hear it sing. Lord, hear it sing. You can hear it sing. This hammer was made of silver. But it rings in gold. The Lord rings in gold. It rings in gold. Take that hammer, give it to my captain. Tell him I'm gone. Lord, tell him I'm gone. Won't you tell him I'm gone? That hammer, it killed John Henry. Lord, it won't kill me. Lord, it won't kill me. Lord, it won't kill me. So yeah, you can hear that. And that's a great, just driving beat 
that uh, a lot of these country blues players were influenced by the train and by the that 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 rhythm and i think that's what makes um songs about railroads and again these legends really make it incredibly uh fun to play all right so let me get my harp out And I'm going to sing a song about a railroad hero. He was an engineer called Casey Jones. And Casey Jones was a famous man for saving a lot of people's lives. Um, he was a real live person back in the early uh, 20th century. He was based in Mississippi. Get that set up. And he rode the Illinois Central, the IC. Um, and he... Um, what he did was uh, he was on a rail line coming into Vaughan, Mississippi, and uh, around the bend there was actually another train on the track, the same line. So what you have is you had a lot of collisions, a lot of things would always happen, fiascos, disasters, train wrecks. And people wrote songs about it. It was almost like before social media, there was a huge event, a huge dis disaster, they would then make songs about it. Well, this one particular instance, he uh, was the engineer, and he he stayed in the in the engine uh, and put the brakes on. It did stop it completely. It did crash, um, but he saved all the passengers on his train. Unfortunately, the engine blew up, and he died as a result. A lot of times, engineers and brakemen would jump off, and they'd say themselves. Uh, he could have done that, but he stayed in there, held the brake, and he unfortunately perished, but saved a lot of people. So Casey Jones was a famous um, legend. And um, the stories are, this one generally tends to be true. So this is Casey Jones. This is done by the great Mississippi John Hurt. Casey Jones was a good engineer. Said to the fireman, got nothing to fear. All we need is some water and some coal. Gonna look out that window, watch the steel wheels roll. It's Tuesday morning, looked like rain. Round the corner came a passenger train. Sitting in the cabin was good old Casey Jones. He was a good engineer, but he's dead and gone. Well, mommy, mommy, she heard the news Sitting on the bed, lacing up her shoes Said to her children, get on your hat Go downtown and see where your pappy is at Mommy, mommy, oh, how could it be? Daddy, he died on that I see. You don't worry and never you fret. You want to get that pension. Your pappy is dead. Casey Jones, he said for he died, gotta fix them roads so all the people can ride, when they ride, they ride the ride, put their trust in, hands in God, gonna put their trust in the hands in, Casey Jones, yes, the IC, Illinois Central. Of course, you know you made a great legend when the Grateful Dead sing 
a version of you. Um, always important. Uh, so I say, uh, if you want more insight to a lot of the backstory and information, I want to burden with you a lot of this, but go to my site, daviddonar.com. You will find all these um, definitions, illustrations, and um, a lot of other information. And it's a way for you to interact, interact with me. You can write me a, a note or a message. I always appreciate it. I love the uh, harp or the... Uh, harmonica because it's again a folky thing it was able people could travel with it it complements a lot of different things and it's <laughs> kind of has that interesting rail sound to it all right i'm going to do uh, another song about uh, railroad travel if i get this thing back on me lie back and forth with with these instruments um so this is about a hobo called Bill Jones. So I think when you hear some of the lyrics, like riding the rod, um, put the hands in God, it's like, what does that mean? Well, a lot of those terms were used in different songs, but in railroad terminology, a hobo was someone who would ride the rails and sometimes wouldn't, most likely wouldn't pay for the ride. So they would get on and uh, they'd go underneath the uh, carriage. And uh, you would ride literally the undercarriage of a, of, a, uh, of a car. Super dangerous. A lot of people would die riding that way. Uh, but uh, hobos were generally transitory workers. They would work fields and then, again, live on the fringes of town. A tramp is someone who doesn't work, who just gets on a train or travels. And a bum is someone who just stays in one place and doesn't work. So there you go. The more you know, right? So this is old Bill Jones was written based on um, Charlie Poole. Charlie Poole wrote a song called Milwaukee Blues. He was an old country blues artist um, in the mountains of western North Carolina and uh, where I uh, spent some time and got influenced by some of these uh, really wonderful art and music. And so he took a lot of Casey Jones, he reinterpreted it and created this interesting song about a hobo. So I'll do a song. My version's called Detroit Blues, but it's basically kind of the same version of his. So let's give it a shot. It's Tuesday morning and it looked like rain. Round the corner came passing street. On the blind said old Bill Jones, he's a good old boy, wants to get home, wants to get home, wants to get home, he's a good hobo, wants to get home. Muddy lakes getting damp. Hop the freight train out of the town. Don't let hobos hanging around. Hanging around. Hanging around. Don't let hobos hanging around. Hands in God, hands in God, 
hands in God. When they rise, they put their hands in God. to do that's something I'm still trying to learn normally uh, you hear the banjo and you hear that they play it nice and fast nice and fast that's what they do but I, I think it's just a beautiful folk instrument and done right it sounds really authentic so anyways let's uh, let's stay on the railroad journey and we talk about rascals right rascals and villains and uh, he wasn't really a villain, but he was a kind of an outlaw. And kind of people, folk people like when uh, the average common person could buck the system, right? The system was always out to get the average person. They could never quite get ahead because the rich, powerful people would always game the system. But when one person would cheat it or run around and evade authority, um, there were folk songs written about these people. And they tended to make really good characters. And then, of course, which each generation of songwriters or people would, would sensationalize it, make it even more grandiose. So this is a, a, a based on a real person called um, Railroad Bill. And Railroad Bill, again, has been sung and written about in so many different genres. Bob Dylan wrote it, uh, did a version of it. And I'm going to share some of the animation that I did based on my song. And again, if you go to daviddonar.com, you'll see some of the, the animations that I have up there in their entirety, and you can uh, get a little bit more whimsical look at it. But I'll, I'll splice it in some of my, my performing here so you can get a sense of it. Um, but he was a real-life person. Not everything he did in the song's true, but he got away with a, a lot of interesting uh, things. Uh, this would be a medley, too. I'm going to actually, the song chord structure is similar to Freight Train, and Freight Train by Elizabeth Cotton, who was a great uh, country blues singer in North Carolina as well, African-American woman who um, was a great legend in her own right. So I'm going to do a little kind of melody or a medley of both because they both have similar uh, phrasing to it. All right, so this is Railroad Bill. He never worked and he never will. Railroad bill, railroad bill. He never worked, man, that dude, he never will, cause he rides. Railroad bill, railroad bill. He said he will. He's smoking cigars with one hundred dollar bills. Yes, he rides. Railroad bill. Railroad bill. He's a mean man. He shot the lights from that poor brakeman's hand. Yeah, he rides. Railroad bill. Freight train, freight train, going too fast. Freight train, freight train, way too fast. When they ride, they ride the ride, put their trust in the hands in God. If I die before I wake, I pray for my soul to throw a tick. Bear me down on old Sullivan Street. I'll smile at every girl we meet. Freight train, freight train, headed out west With that 44 tucked right in my vest 
when I go, I'll drink my rye. Say hello, then say goodbye. Railroad Bill, Railroad Bill. He never worked, man, that dude, he never will, but he rides. Railroad Bill. Railroad Bill, never worked, never will. Okay, that's our villain. Uh, we're going to do another villain. Chilling like a villain. With another banjo tune, why not? Actually, I don't need this for now. Pardon me. Take that off. Now with banjo, you usually got a tune. Please forgive me. I'm not always good at, at tuning by ear, but that's what you do when you play a banjo. Uh, now, villains are rascals. I always like to talk about that. And this one's based on a real person called Stagger Lee. Stagger Lee was a person who lived in St. Louis. A lot of good songs come from St. Louis. I don't know if there's crazy people or villains that uh, tend to become really good song uh, topics. Uh, Stagger Lee kind of was a gangster, a drug lord, um, a ring pin and in the underbelly of uh, St. Louis. So you had some um, interesting events that would happen. And so there was a situation that Billy DeLion and Stagger Lee got caught in an altercation, and it claimed that it was a, a Stetson hat that set it all off. Um, again, it's kind of like this person who was notorious, but yet became more famous in the end. He killed a man. Um, and in this story, he dies in the end. He's actually um, uh, killed by the state. But in the real life, he actually doesn't die. He ends up in prison and dies of something else, of like syphilis or something, for God forbid. Um, but this is the legend or the myth of Stagger Lee. <laughs> Everybody, not old cool Stagley, he's a bad man. That cool old Stagley. Mr. Billy Deline Beck Stagley, please spare my life. I got two little baby girls and a sweet darling mother and wife. He's a bad man, that cool old stag Lee. I don't care about your babies or your loving wife. You took my stitching hat, now you're gonna lose your life. I'm a bad man, I'm cool old stag Lee. started to curse. Well, Judge said, get him now Oh, he gets us first. He's a bad man. Well, the town folk gathered around with their hands up high. 
They all gave a great big cheer, glad to see him die. He's a bad man, that cool old stag leader. Police officer, how could it be? You can't arrest everybody, not old cool stag leader. He's a bad man, that cool old stag leader. He's a bad man, that cool old stag leader. Staggerly. And uh, I'd like to finish it off with uh, uh, another great murder ballad. This was um, called uh, Betty and Dupree. And Betty and Dupree were a couple in Georgia, down in Atlanta. Frank Dupree was 17 years old, very just barely able to uh, function in society. And uh, he fell in love with this cabaret singer in the 20s. And so you could say maybe he became so enamored or so infatuated with her that he would compel himself to do something as crazy as rob a jewelry store. And unfortunately, things bad things happen when you rob uh, a store with a gun. And um, some would argue that he probably was stunted, you know, behaviorally, mentally, probably wouldn't fit um, trial for a murder. Unfortunately, he did hang. And so this became sensationalized and it became headline news. And newspapers love to sensationalize the crime spree in Atlanta. But again, with these ballads, they become immortal in song. I'll, let, I'll send it off with um, Betty and Dupree. Betty Ann Dupree, Mama wants a diamond ring. Yeah, Betty Ann Dupree, Betty wants a diamond ring. Well, Dupree said to Betty, I'll get you almost anything. Went to Atlanta, rob a jewelry store. He went down to Atlanta. Got his old 44. Went down to Peach Street. He was gonna rob that jewelry store. In came a store detective. The priest shot him down to the floor. In came that store detective. The priest shot him to the floor. Yeah, when he fell down, Frank the priest said, I wounded three or more. Ran up to Detroit, oh, the police are on his tail. Ran up to Detroit, police hot on his tail. Well, he called Betty, Mama, post my bail. Oh, they took him back to Atlanta, gonna hang him way up high. Going back to Atlanta, gonna hang him way up high. Goes up that elevator, Betty. You better wave him goodbye. Betty, Betty, see what your old greed has done. Betty, oh, Betty, see what your greed has done. The only man you ever loved, gonna be dead and gone. <laughs>